Good morning, morning everybody, and welcome, welcome back to the Dean Callan Show. I have, I have yet, yet another amazing, amazing wine, wine episode. episode. I, I, I just, I've started, started looking at my back bar after, after I go live, because, because I've seen a couple of live sessions, sessions where I've left things like yesterday's, I left this up here. here. <laughs> <laughs> and I hadn't actually thought about it, but we've just been polishing wine glasses, myself and Joe. You know, you know, there's, there's nothing, nothing better. better. Oh, I should, I should bring, bring Joe in, shouldn't I? Shouldn't I? Shouldn't I? <laughs> He's right here. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Boom. Right, right Joe. Joe. Um, um, so, so, ladies and gentlemen, the legendary Joe Wetzak joins me in the cabin today so that we can taste some delicious South African wines that have won. Is it double gold? Yeah, double gold. From the Veritas Wine Awards? Yeah, absolutely. That's right. And in case you're wondering, um, this, this is a sponsored episode. episode. This, this is this is, this is where, where I start feeling like, like you know I'm, I'm moving out, out of the basement, basement like Wayne like Road <laughs> and into <laughs> the real world. And, and speaking of sponsors, I want to start, start right away um, where, where I plan to kind of end up by, by hearing, hearing from, from one of our sponsors. sponsors right? Right? So, 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 so we do that right away. Telly, let's do it. Okay. So so bear with us. We're going to play a sponsor video and then we'll kind of come right back and drink wine straight away because my mouth is salivating just thinking about it. And here's our first. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm extremely glad to introduce you to uh, Vinventions. Vinventions is a leading wine closure producer worldwide. We operate facilities in Europe, in North and South America, in Asia, and in South Africa. Inventions was created more than 20 years ago and is recognized as a true innovator in wine closures, especially through the creation of the Nomaco Green Line, a complete sustainable range of closures made of biopolymers from the sustainable cultivation of sugarcane. We are for many years in South Africa where we have our own facility, we have our own team led by Johan Koradi, and where we enjoy a successful growth of our Nomacor Green Line. And despite the current crisis, we will reinforce our presence in this very important wine country in 2021 by a new investment in the finishing line in our facility in Wellington. I wish you all a very nice Vertex conference. Thank you. All, All right, right. So, so we've got, got a message from Emma, from Emma saying the sound, sound is a bit iffy. iffy. But Ooh. when you say iffy, what do you mean iffy? <laughs> 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 is it noisy? Is it the sound in the background? Is it, background? Is is it just Joe? Is it, is it Joe, Joe and me? me? Emma, Emma thank, thank you for being our tech person, person our sound person. person. Um, just, just let us know in the comments. We've got your comment. I'm moving on from that. I'm hoping that the will work out. Just sort itself out. Right, so Joe. Can, Can you introduce, introduce to us uh, uh, both Ollie, Ollie yourself, yourself, Ollie, Ollie and, and the wife? Yeah. Yep. Now, no, uh, right. I've, 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 I've been lucked out today, today Dean, because um, there, there are a few people, people that are really influencing people's drinking habits, habits in this country. Um, um, and we've got, got both of them talking. We had lovely Helena last week, last week but we've got the most well-known, I would say now, the most well-known media wine star in the UK, He's, he's incredibly talented. He's a real polymath. He's, he's got, got an amazing palette. Um, he's extremely charming. Um, I, met I met him a long time ago in Manchester, Manchester uh, where we had this crazy, crazy, crazy <laughs> happenstance. A meeting we had the night off where we decided to be somebody we weren't and we mm -hmm. dressed up in Hawaiian shirts with shades on. <laughs> with a toothpick. They went around the bars of Manchester and his name was Vice. And, and they let you night. into all the bars? Yeah, and we were walking in we're like, like Miami Vice. We were saying, they were, we're, we're undercover American cops trying to blend in with the local Mancunian man. <laughs> and we, we didn't come out of character all night. It was the, one of the funniest nights I've had in my life. That sounds fun. So I call him Nark, he, I'm Vice, he calls me Nark. So thanks very much, Ollie. <laughs> anyway, so but Ollie has become uh, like, like synonymous with, um, you know, wine TV. He's on every single one of those important shows. He's been like, he was presenter on Iron Chef, even and um, yeah, he's very kindly allowed uh, done, done some inserts for us because he's actually filming a TV series. Yeah, yeah, moment. he he was a bit he, he yeah, wasn't he able to actually. Said, I want to do it. Last I don't want minute. to not do it. So can we do it as inserts? And yeah. I, I will. I'll record me tasting the wines, and then you can. So see he's what you like think. proper filming, like real big life. Yeah, yeah, big stuff. And he's had he's had big TV shows. He's done shows right across America on Discovery Home and Home and Leisure. You know, he's he's big balls, this guy. Okay, you know? and uh, he's also one of the most focused and charming and most professional guys in the industry. If I was half as professional and as charming as he was, I would have gone off. <laughs> but so Ollie's going to um, taste these wines. Go on a lot further. Man, wow. you're not retired yet. No, no, no. I'm, it's I'm just not, the I'm beginning. Not, I'm it's not a dead quite yet. New medium. Ooh, I don't know. Okay. Um, no, so so can, I, can I make a suggestion, yeah. right? So yeah. we've got Ollie coming in. Now, last week, we had yourself and Helena 
both discussing at the same time. Obviously, there were audio issues, so it was difficult to hear from both of us at the same time. Absolutely. Now, this time, what I'm going to do <laughs> is I'm going to play a game of, um, <laughs> what's it called, where, wait, 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 uh, where you're getting married and the husband gets asked ah, questions. Mr. and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm going to play, because I'm no expert in wine, as you know. That's the whole point of this. We, you know, it's like the Olympics, where you have the people that can swim. If they just put one normal person that can't swim like them, people would understand the pace in the pool, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, um, if I ask you about this wine and you tell me what you think about the wine, Okay. Then I'm going to play his because, as you know, we haven't had a time to to really go through it. You've got him speaking there, but it's in mute. Yes, yeah, in me. I was so <laughs> hoping he'd go first. Okay, so I'll tell you what wines we're doing today. Okay. Um, and Ollie chose between doing some red wines or some white wines. He said, "Hell, you know, we're coming into spring now. It'd be quite nice to do some white wines. Yeah, more relevant." Um, and we're picking the two most famous white grape varieties in the entire known universe, which is Sauvignon Blanc, yep. which is the most popular drink in in glasses all over the world, and Chardonnay, which used to be. I, well, <laughs> but it's still, you know, in terms I of. I still premium, love Chardonnay. Yeah, you know, if you're going to spend, if you want to find a wine that costs £2,000 and it's white, it's probably. I, I, I actually used to, uh, I used to serve a lot of Chardonnay in Australia. Australia. And I used to work at the Martini Bar at the Western Hotel on O'Connell Street, in, and I was like in this super That's fancy, fancy bar. Super fancy. Well, this is the thing, right? It was super fancy. But like there was this movement of ABC, anything but Chardonnay, yeah, right? Yeah. And people hated Chardonnay because it was too popular, yeah. especially in Australia. And um, what about Riesling? And, and we used to get <laughs> we used to get people come in and they um, they would see a posh place and they'd walk up and they'd be like, um, "Can I please get a glass of Chardonnay?" And like they're <laughs> Australian bogans, yeah, 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 yeah. but they're trying to put on a posh English accent, and just because they thought Chardonnay was really posh. So what I would do is, can I pour a bit of this? Yeah, sure, is that sure, all right? Go for it, so this it. is what I would do. Still got a cap on it, by the way. <laughs> Anoint the glass. And I used to pour it way slower, and I'd pour it as slow as I possibly could. <laughs> and they would be like, this place is really fancy. And my manager would be like, stop it. Like, because <laughs> it wasn't our mentioned. service. And I had like a white cloth over yeah, here yeah, and all this yeah. other stuff and like made this fake well, th some people prestige. Might remember, some people might remember the Kath and Kim soap comedy. In Australia, there was a comedy called Kath and Kim, okay. which were a couple of bogan women. I think they go, um, it's not Chardonnay, it's Cardenay. The H is silent. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and Kylie Minogue starred in it. It was very, very funny, serious. Anyway, oh, so Kylie Minogue's legit. Uh, she's legit. She's, anyway, she's a superstar. So basically, we've got, we've got two wines here, which are basically the same wine twice. The reason why I did this is it's quite nice to see um, you know, a wine and then see, see what the wine tastes like a year old. And why do we fuss over this in the wine industry. People say, oh, will this wine keep? Oh, yes, it'll keep for three to four years. Keep. And then you've got people <laughs> selling it for four or five years if they can. Then they, they drink it and they, they discover they don't like it. And they would have enjoyed it when it was fresh because they don't like old wine. They've just been told that it will oh. age. So I want to show you two wines which are a year apart so you can see what happens because most, okay. most of the changes happen in the first 24 months. I right? think I like older stuff because I think when I pour a Chardonnay, I don't know what it is, but I wish I... I think it would be inappropriate for this moment, but ba basically, I like bass. I like yeah. bass. I like buttery, buttery, <laughs> biscuit, biscuit, biscuit bass. But, but, but I like buttery biscuit bass is the best way I can describe yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But like when it goes more yellow, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's more like rich and like, it's, it's, called, it's, it's almost more, like it's more rounder. Oak, yeah, it's more yeah. oaky and, and also, fatty. What, what and you're looking for is for all of those is bits. Is that age just, or is that oak? It's, it's a few things. A lot of people thought it was, and actually back in the 90s, you know, the wines, the wines were big and yellow. Um, it was a lot of oak. Wines were driven by that van buttery, vanillary, yeah. banana taste of oak. And, and actually, you know, I think with some, some people have thrown the baby out of the bathwater. It's hard to find those wines now. And, and, and a whole generation... That's my style. ...learned about Chardonnay that way. So I think it's weird that Chardonnay goes through phases. At the yeah. moment in Australia when they make Chardonnay, they make Chardonnay that's so skinny and so thin that I don't like them. It's like the polar opposite It's of like that. metallic. And yeah, they're thin and skinny and low in alcohol, high in acid. They're all trying to make Chablis. And, 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 and you, you've, gone, you've gone too far the other way. Now, South Africa, um, Australia, New Zealand, they all make world-class Chardonnays. Mm -hmm. Chardonnays that are as good as almost anything you can buy in Burgundy. And now a lot of people out there will be going, Joe, steady on, boy. You know, you know <laughs> remember, where down, where, where, remember where your salary comes from. <laughs> it's not really true, is it? Well, it is. Because actually, Burgundy does make some very, very fine wines, but 
If you look at the really fine stuff, there isn't an awful lot of it being made. And actually, if I was going to pick a Chardonnay that wasn't from France, mm -hmm. then the two places I'd go without batting an eyelid would be Australia or yeah. South Africa. And frankly, with the exchange rate, South Africa. Yeah. Um, and we've got a couple of beautiful Chardonnays here, which are not only double gold medal winning world class wines, but they're exceptionally good value for money. I'll try and explain that later on when Ollie talks about them as well. But to start with, we've got a couple of Sauvignon Blancs. Yeah. Um, if you ask the random guy in the street, what's your favourite wine? Seven times out of ten, in my experience, they go, ah, oh, it's New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. I thought you were going to say Fino Sherry. Oh, I wish it was Jokes. the case. I, <laughs> oh, I wish that was the case, right? Because we all love a bit of Fino Sherry. Um, and if you ask them, well, if you're not drinking Sauvignon Blanc, what are you drinking? They go, uh, 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 gin and tonic? <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's almost like if they don't drink Sauvignon they, Blanc, they don't drink any wine at they all. They jump completely out of wine. Yeah, they're, it's almost like it's, it's a wine, but not. It's, they don't see it like a wine. They see it like buying a daiquiri in a bar. Yeah. Buying a Sauvignon Blanc is not like buying any other wine, because yeah. they don't like other wines. And when we taste the wine, like, let's have a crack yeah, at this. That's what 2019, I'm actually, right? So this wine's I've now... Poured got, us, I've poured us waters today. Uh, and 2019, so we're now looking at it. It's a wine that's two years old. And this wine is made using a very special technique. It was an invention by the owners. Uh, Taste Low, who's an absolutely genius winemaker, has an amazing team. Uh, his family have been making wine in this farm for 130 years, and they started making wine here before 1700. I mean, we're not talking about a new world wine that's only been around for 30 years. This place is ancient, right? and it's in a gorgeous place, less than half an hour's drive from Cape Town, uh, in a place called Durbanville. But Durbanville, the problem with Durbanville is that Durbanville sounds like Durban, and Durban's like miles away from Cape Town. So now they so call Cape Tonians are like yeah. So they that's go, what, too can, far. can we can we can we not call it Durbanville because people are getting the wrong message. They think it's not made near Cape Town. So now it's called Do Cape Town. So they've changed the name of the region so people are aware that when they fly to Cape Town, it's around the corner. So this stuff is actually ah, made in near Cape Town. And but like so, Durbanville's Ville's in Cape Town, but yeah, yeah, it's literally 30, 25 minutes from the airport. Twenty minutes. Was from the that airport. a tourist thing to, to yeah? Because people to go to Durban, which is right on the other side of the country, for different reasons. But Durbanville, which means Durban town, is in Cape Town. So that was confusing okay. to a lot of people. Anyway, so it's a bit like... Is there a Capeville in Durban? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but it's a bit like... I've been told that over 2,000 American tourists go to Dublin every year to find out where Barry t Barry's Tea is made. There's a brand called Barry's Tea, which is sold all over America, and they think the tea plantations are in Ireland. So they go to Ireland, to just, but it's just, it's, just, it's just like Twinings. It's just a tea sorter, right? They go to Ireland to find, find tea. To find the tea plantations where their favourite cup of Barry's Tea comes from. It's true. And so, you know, you've got oh, to make things a bit simpler for people. Anyway, so we've got a wine here, Sauvignon Blanc. Not only is Sauvignon Blanc the fruitiest... Wait, so, so we're doing, remember, Right, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, watch this. Remember what he says, and we're gonna we're gonna play. We can't put both of us on it. We're just gonna let Ollie do his thing. But after this, we're gonna play Ollie's and see what what. Take notes. <laughs> you right? it's completely the opposite. It's okay, gonna, gonna be, be the fun. opposite. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks to, again, thanks to Veritas, to Veritas Awards for letting me pick out of their double golds out of thousands of wines. Only a handful of these wines get this award. And it just so happens that two consecutive vintages of this wine, which is rapidly becoming one of the most famous Sauvignon Blancs in South Africa, they both won double gold. So we're going to see the wine. It smells really nice. It, it smells beautiful, right? So what does it smell of? Sauvignon Blanc has this amazing smell, which when it starts to develop, which this has, it almost smells like seashore, like oyster shells and kind of, there's something briny and see, almost, mm. fe I wouldn't say Fino Sherry because it's not oxidised. But you see what I mean? If you have, no, if you have no, oysters with it, um, it sort of makes sense. It smells I know like what you're thinking shop. of. You're thinking of, uh, oh, there's a vermouth that is, that they, they make it and the, the, the wine, the winery is on the water oh. and they have, a, they have oyster ropes. Oh really? Right at the winery. So, so you can, like, so you've got this. You've got oh, this absolute sense of marine. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's but, Noily Pratt. Yeah, yeah. So, so Noily Pratt has this kind of marine sense about it. But more importantly, there is tons of fruit, tons and tons of fruit. What they've done with this wine, and you can see that, Dino. You know, it's called Winter Ferment Sauvignon Blanc. Okay. Which had the camera, but Winter Ferment is so the it's name a they give this ferment? wine. They like, make they make does six it or take seven longer. They make six or seven Sauvignon Blancs uh, from from like. Locally, from like a fiver up to like 20 quid. This is one of the better ones. What they've done is they've picked the grapes and then they froze them. They froze the juice. And waited. They froze the grapes. Yeah, for four months, the grapes were frozen. So when they defrosted it, all of the little skin cells, all those little membranes, all of, all of the construct of the plant had been decimated by the freezing process. Yeah. So when it's defrosted, 
It's like the ultimate press. It's, it's extracted all of the essential oils out of the skin, which is what makes Sauvignon Blanc smell so tropical and beautiful. Um, and this is a, a technique that they've tried, and it sounds brutal, and it sounds like it wouldn't work. But Taste Low, who, make, who makes this wine, is getting double golds every year he produces this wine now. And it sells out faster than it goes on the market. And it's super sexy wine. Um, have a taste. It's, um, it's unusual to try a new world Sauvignon Blanc that's over a year old, because they tend to fall over. Once that fruitiness is gone, they all taste earthy and horrible. But this wine has amazing softness. It's what we'd describe as finesse. It's not edgy in any way. The finish is kind of stony, watery, crisp, refreshing. There's no edges. It doesn't taste wiry or funky. It's really clean on the finish. And finesse in a, in a Sauvignon Blanc two years old is very, very hard to find. You only find that in wines from, let's say, the middle of the Loire and the Puy Fume, where, where you can buy wines that cost three or four times this much. Um, and it, it, it's rare to find using the Sauvignon Blanc, or new, a new world Sauvignon Blanc, whether it's African or not, that has this much to still give, and it's two or three years old. Most of these things are drunk within six months. I wonder what Ollie said. <laughs> uh, I really like your point on the construction of it, like how it was made. I mean, it, ta it doesn't um, taste, it doesn't taste me, vibrant, I, hard, and edgy. <laughs> uh, so, so I'm, I'm, I am, in case anyone's wondering watching this back and they're not seeing the comments, I am trying to tweak audio vicariously through comments. I'm doing my best, and that's why the audio is up and down, my hands over here. But uh, I think I think the best thing for us is to bring our both our volumes down and our okay. voice sensitivity up. Okay. I think we're crossing over in each other's mic. We've uh, big we're loudy, voices loudy voices. And no soft uh, Fab yet. sound isolation. I will stop anything. shouting, Dean. How's that? Yeah. Um, so good stop. I get I get like there's a it feels like the skins are integrated into it. If that makes yeah, sense. it's like, like you like almost the feel the pulp. Kind of a you can feel the pulp. Flavor. You know, you know, it's like a difference between orangina with the bits in and orangina without the bits in. You feel the texture of the fruit somehow. Mm. It's a real satisfying, chewy. It like, makes my mouth water. It's a beautiful wine. Um, it's got a citrus note to it, though. Like you could mm. use that in cocktails. Like you absolutely. Could mix with that. I mean, it's got a bit of pomelo in there, a bit right. of lemon. So pomelo, lemon. He he mentioned you mentioned the area that's from. So it's like it's not from uh, what was it. It's not from, from Durban, it's, it's from Cape Town. It's not from Durban, it's from Cape Town. By the sea. Uh, by the sea, right. So you mentioned the ocean and, uh, yeah, and the frozen crushy McBob. So let's see, <laughs> let's see what Ollie said. So Ollie's first video is up now. Thanks, Joe. You're absolutely right. Because this is a pre-record, though, I have no idea what you just said, so you could have said that I am Batman. My name's Ollie. Uh, I, what do I do? I do all sorts of things. I love wine. I enjoy talking about wine. I scribble about it in the newspaper. I occasionally pop up on the box. And I'm absolutely thrilled to have the opportunity to just enthuse about the quality of these brilliant South African wines. I mean, South Africa, it's easy to think, oh, yeah, 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 it's a great wine producing country. It's a bit like hot Scotland. It's so much more than that. You've got a quilt. You've got a patchwork of so many diverse soil types. The aspects are amazing. It's the talent as well, though. There's so much talent. And look at this. This Dimasdal 2019 Sauvignon Blanc. I've had a little cheeky look at this just now. And what blows me away is just, it's the balance between the exuberance of the wine and the finesse, the polish, the poise, and the, the length. It's that defining, if you're, basically if you're into wine, this is one of those wines that feels like liftoff on the finish. And if you're new to wine, trust me, this is like a great glass elevator to the citrus stars. I love it. It's texturing as well. It's got a richness to it. There's a finesse to that finish that I just cannot believe. This is breathtaking talent. I've actually been there a long time ago, actually. And uh, Teos has done just the most incredible job here. I'm, I'm thrilled to be tasting it. Listen, get yourself some shellfish, sip this wine. Beam style completely rocks. Shows what South Africa can do. Back to you, Joe. So uh, yeah, I well, think I think I said I feel vindicated. He mentioned citrus. Yeah, he mentioned, he mentioned and you talked he talked about pulp. He talked about texture. The wine's got real texture. We talked about that. Uh, we talked about talent. We talked about sea. We talked about plates of lobster. Speaking of talent, like <laughs> he can talk, huh? He's great. He's so very I'm very good. So I'm looking that way. So if I'm going to refer to Ollie, I'm I'm going to point <laughs> that way because that's where Ollie comes Those in. Point, point over there. <laughs> But um, I, there was a couple, I was completely engrossed in what he was saying, and then he'd stop, and I'd be like, oh, that's the end of it. 
and then <laughs> <laughs> off he goes. He off he really goes. Like, it was captivating. That was awesome. I'm um, pleased he liked the wine as much as I did. Mm. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to follow it on with a wine that's a year younger, which is kind of this wine doesn't survive a year. This stuff's already sold out. And this is a year younger. This is so the current release. So when you say it doesn't survive a year, it doesn't survive a year because... Because it, 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 it just tastes too good when it's younger. You'll see a wine which will have more vivid fruit, more passion fruit, more tingle, more acidity, more zing, more... Um, I know, I'm curious to see. Like, I love this, but mm. this is the, like... It's really funny because I go for like thick, buttery... Like not necessarily fruity, but definitely not acidic or mineral, right? No, right. And this doesn't have the mineraliness that I dislike. Yeah, well, it, I, I, it's not that I dislike it. It's just I, would, that I would go as far as to say that it's the minerals there. If you left this wine for two, three more years, you, that would be all okay. that's left. But it's overlaid by loads of flesh. I think if you're going to have mineral, there's got to be some charm to go with it. And you're like me. I don't like really austere wines or even austere drinks. I mean, there are, mm. there are drinks out there which are just like licking marble. They're... They're, they're frosty cold. There's no personality. There's no yeah. warmth. And, and when I want, uh, when I drink, I drink. I want it to give me a cuddle. Do you That's know what exactly I mean? what it is. And this does. This does. It's all right. It's like I remember uh, some, some some comedian saying he wears t-shirts that are three sizes too small on purpose. So it feels like someone's cuddling him oh, all no. day. I Hilarious. No, 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 no. Nobody want me to do that either. I think that's probably for other else to say. <laughs> that's <laughs> Right, so so I love this. I think the one thing that I would take away from it, the mouthfeel and like the overall kind of oh, like the biggest take I've got, you know, apple skins. Yeah. Right. When you cut just the apple skin off, have yeah. you ever tried to eat a bunch of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like the the the, the, the mouthfeel that you get, it's not woody. No. It's but it's got a there's an essence. Like it's the Germans the have same a word. Thing as wood. But yeah. it's like, it's not astringency, but it dries out your mouth a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting, it, I'm getting that feeling. It's kind of it's kind of lignified. It's like chewing on mm. a stick a little bit. Yeah. And you get that. And uh, here you're getting that. And that's because of the extract. This is like tannin in a red yeah, wine. This is grip. It. But it's a different type. Of, it's like a green tannin. And Sauvignon Blanc, does, Sauvignon Blanc never has that. Why does it have that? It's because this shit was frozen that's solid. It. So the freezing process extracts all the lignin, all the tannin, all and the phenols. This is a new thing. No, I don't know anybody else in the world that does it. It's unique to him. Okay. So this is pretty cool. So let's try this one, which is a wine a year younger. Now, 19 was one of the best Sauvignon Blanc vintages I can ever remember in South Africa in the time that I've been so, drinking it. I'm but so 20, everyone's wine. raving about how good 20 is. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't quite seen that 20 is as good as 19. But there are people that, that, are, that think it is better, in fact. So it'd be interesting to see this. Uh, okay, so we started with... 19, and now we've got a right. 2020. So this is younger. I thought we were going older. Yeah, well, it was it was it was, um, it was Ollie's decision to try the oldest one first, so I'm go I'm going in the same order as him. Um, it's not that fruit. It's way <laughs> fruitier. That this smell. Is so much. This is like a cocktail. There's definitely passion fruit in there. You don't have you would, you don't even have to taste that. So now you can make a cocktail out was, of it, right? If I was uh, if I was doing a blind tasting of this, I would think that yeah, I would think that this had cocktail in it. Can you imagine how easy this it is to make a cooler? Fruit. If you had a wine like this, and you had a big jug, and you filled it full of big ice, sparkling water, some so mint, maybe some rhubarb every, vermouth. Everyone's telling me different things about the audio. It's really weird. On Facebook, they're saying the audio is coming through really quiet. On YouTube, they're saying it's like echoey and horrible. No, I'm, today, I'm just going to wing it a little bit. Today, Facebook's coming through as the backup, isn't it? So it might be going through on, on a quieter theme. Uh, let's see if that helps. Like, there's not much else I can do without putting headphones on. Um, all right, so Dean, you can turn yourself up a little bit. Right. Okay. Again, sorry to be breaking the fourth wall. Um, I do plan to get an intern. I do yeah. plan, I'm going to get someone well, to come in. And somebody to operate that. You'll have a full galley in the corner with, yeah, with, well, with people. Just, that I mean, somebody right here will take you for you. It's horrible if I had headphones on right now. At least, you, at least you can't see your eyes doing that. Yeah. <laughs> but this one, this, this one, definitely smells like passion. If I wanted to teach somebody what Sauvignon Blanc can smell like, why people, oh why God. half the world drinks Sauvignon Blanc, this is the, the if you could can that smell, it's guava, it's star fruit, yeah, it's guava. it's it's green mango, it's passion fruit, it's nectarines up the wazoo, loads of nectarine, 
and it's and there's like a, a peach. Do you know? Do you know when you um when you get really good white peach, but you and you make a bellini out yeah, of yeah the flat ones, and you use a, like acidic prosecco. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's kind yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. there's yeah. a little bit of that. And, and it, there's no point having a bellini; it's got that tension, right? And this wine has the acidity to match it. It's super zingy. Oh, that's really nice. Okay, I see what you mean. So you meant to drink this young. You see. People don't realise if you drink, because oh. you can see, how would you keep that in your, that was, <laughs> how would you hang on to that? Yeah, how would you hang on to that? But if you do, oh, that what happens. What do they make? They, uh, I guess they're making something like maybe 10, 20,000 bottles. And how it. much does it cost a bottle? Do you know? In the UK, if that came over here, which I, I don't know anybody sold it here yet. Um, I know they sell it in Germany and it sells for around 20 pounds, mm. about 20 quid. Um, if you're in South Africa, that wine costs you a tenner, it's about 11 pounds. Wow. It's incredible. I'm, I'll tell you what we should do. What? Right, we've got two more Ollie videos. Mm -hmm. We should get on the Veritas app and find out how much these actually cost. Yeah, absolutely. We can do that. Yeah, absolutely. There's the app. Uh, get the app. Phone charging. Is it working? It's going to be great. Right, so we said grapefruit. Not charged yet. Well, as soon as it's, it's on, we'll, we'll turn on the app. We've got grapefruit. Mm -hmm. I said, I definitely, both of us said passion fruit. If yeah, he doesn't yeah, say yeah. passion fruit, yeah. if he, he has to say passion fruit. Like, it smells like passion fruit. Unless, oh, unless so you tropical. lived under a rock for your whole life and you didn't know what... This is tropical. <laughs> yeah. This, uh, honestly, this could, you could just serve this in a tiki bar. Uh, I, I have been, you've made a cocktail. I've been accused of, of describing wines like this as umbongo for grown-ups. Uh, it's like, it's like, it's like a can of, it's like, it's like a can of Rio with beluga vodka in it. So, so Emma's saying, if Joe leans back... The audio is perfect. <laughs> that is my boomy voice. Okay, it's thanks, a, Emma. I think it's a boomy McBoom face. Problem. Sorry, honey. Yeah, this thanks. This is uh, this is this is just. I, I can't wait to see what he says. Right. So, <laughs> what was what was your? So we talked about four words. Four words. Four words. Um, citrus. Citrus. Zing. Zing. Um, fruit. Fruit. Just just tons of fruit and uh, food, food, food. I'm I'm a little mouth watering. <laughs> Trying to find things that he's definitely going to say. No, I don't know. I mean, uh, I, 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 it's not my comment. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I, Ollie, Ollie, Ollie 2, the, the, the Joe Wadsack versus Ollie Smith, part two. Thanks, Joe. And the glory of South Africa has been bottled right here in our Dima style 2020. The winter ferment, I mean, what a wine, an incredible vintage. You've got this extraordinary tropical exuberance that just leaps out of the glass. All it wants to do is entertain. And it's more than that. It's a wine with real elegance, finesse, and polish. Whenever I taste a wine, what I want it to do is just to, I want it to take me to another dimension. I want to feel extraordinary. I want to feel connected with the place. I want to learn more about the wine. I want to be inspired to feast this. Oh, I wish I could take everyone out for dinner with a glass of this right now. This, it's a stunner. Mmm. It's got the most gorgeous, it has this exotic note. And the Durbanville Valley with its cool influence is really something that I think you've got to bear in mind when you're tasting this wine. It's a real delight to find a wine of such balance. I love the texture. I'm enjoying the zestiness. I am absolutely knocked out by the, by the amount to which I'm salivating. This is a wine that's making... It's making me surf on salivation. I know that sounds completely repellent and I apologise. This wine though, honestly, it just wants to get out and entertain you. And the only person who could be more entertaining than this wine is Joe Wodzak. Back to you, Joe. He is so good at talking. Yes. And you know he you know that was one take. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's one take. Like that was definitely one, one take. take. Uh, the only person who could be more entertaining. <laughs> Back to you, Joe. <laughs> So good. Thanks, Ollie Wally. What a legend. Cheers, Vice. So he said tropical. He said tropical. tropical. He said zesty. I said mm. citrus. Um, he it just just exuberance is what it's about, isn't it? It's just so delicious. So easy to mm. drink. It's like it's like having a big bag of Malam strips and eating them all at once. <laughs> so, so was a general consensus on this because they've both got the double golds. I think from from if if there was a clapometer, I think Ollie enjoyed the younger one more, and I think okay. we all got more genuine pleasure out of it. But the nineteen, I think the nineteen with food would be a different kettle of fish. We had that with some sea bass or mm. some blackened fish on a barbecue. 
you know, that would just be a different, different grade. Just imagine the blackened snapper on a beach and just having that to wash it down with. I mean, it'd just be amazing. Do you know what happened in the, the weather in the two different vintages? Yeah, the 2019, I know, was a very, very nice vintage. It was very, uh, after vintages, which they struggled with huge heat and drought and all sorts of things. In 2019, things were a bit more on even keel. All the dams filled up with rain again. They had a proper wet season. It was still pretty warm. So they're very, very fruity wines. But in 2020, I think the whole thing was much cooler. And if it's cooler, the fruit retains more acidity, as you know. So I think the 2020 is kind of an archetypal white wine vintage. It's perfect for Sauvignon Blanc, really. Um, 2019, we better have bigger boned whites like Chenin and Chardonnay, I think. Right. There you go. So those are the first two knocked off. Taste low at uh, Demersdahl. What a guy. Um, what a team you have there. Um, I shall be back in September. I'm coming for a quick drink. He's only 20 minutes from the airport. You just take the driver. Hey, can you turn left? I, I want to, to take, take them. <laughs> no, take it. It's so funny. Right, yeah. so. There'll be, there'll be drinks for later. Are we going to move on to the next one? Shall yeah. I get you water? Yeah, actually, have, have a water? glass of water first. I don't want to fall over. Mm. Lovely. Back over in the glass washing station. Mr. Again. Callan, I'd like to say that you've done a nice clean-up job this last week. It's I've changed the setup a little bit. Yeah, it's uh, it's, it's either either that or Sly drank it all last night. It's difficult to keep on top of things, but and, and I've gotten rid of some of the booze. But yeah, it's a it's a it's a. And just to refer back to last night, I think it was great to see how many people were watching you and Sly yesterday and what an icon he is. Yeah, he's Emma a legend. adores Sly. He's so uh, we good. We both do. And we also love Wu-Tang Clan, so that all kind of fits yeah. together very nicely. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool that he jumped on Isn't stage that, with Wu-Tang. Would Wu -Tang. you have the confidence to, to like, spit, spit the just, rhymes? Just, oh, he got up and <laughs> knew them. them. Yeah, them. it's so cool. Yeah. Um, and it's, like, for me, Wu-Tang's, like, it, well, I, I didn't go out and buy Wu-Tang albums when I was a kid, but they were playing everywhere I went. And then my friends all, like, brought the albums around and then suddenly I was like well I need to have all these and then we bought I don't know many people that have done this Dean, one thing I think we pulled the 19 because we had the 19 first uh oh did I'm we go wrong I'm pretty sure that this is the last one that that uh, Ollie tastes so, so are they okay first. to just breathe for a minute yeah yeah yeah, yeah in you fact, can if, do anything, that? if anything they'll accentuate the differences so that's okay um I'm pretty sure he tried the the the, the 21st I don't know why he chose to do the other way around this time but now um so he's just fed you the what he's the order he's done. Well, it just I can tell from the from, from the names of the of the the names of the files told me which wines he tasted. Oh, so, okay. So I knew right. which ones are which. So so uh, I didn't right. see him in advance. It was just uh, I think that was a helpful. All right. Helpful so use. Emma said perfect sound now. Oh, Great. thanks, babe. Thank you, honey. Thank you, Emma. I the best sound person ever. I couldn't brush my teeth <laughs> in the morning you, without we that amazing We should get you woman. on. Uh, we should get you on a mic somewhere, like a phone call. Um, Dean wants you to come and join us next week. Mm. Emma, you're coming. We're getting, we're getting yeah, an Uber. You're out. coming here and watching the show from the shed. Up All right. That. Okay, so, right. This is, so, so, so this wine, just tell you a little bit about it. Um, if, Robertson's a very strange region. Robertson's not that much to look at in, in the main. I mean, most of the, re the wine regions in South Africa are just breathtaking to look at. I mean, jaw-droppingly, smashingly beautiful. Um, if you drive kind of like over the pass out of Cape Town, going up to altitude, then you go, disappear in this tunnel and you go through this very long tunnel and you, you appear in what feels like kind of northern, northern England. It, you're like, what happened to South Africa? It's disappeared. And it's right up in the middle of, it's, it's right inland. Um, and Robertson has made a name for itself making this great variety, Chardonnay. And some truly delicious Chardonnays are made here. That's not to say there aren't exquisite Chardonnays in other parts of South Africa. Stellenbosch has its share of them. Elgin is a region which is becoming almost a Grand Cru just for Chardonnay. Um, and also down by the coast, down Walker Bay, where all the, all, the, all, the, all the whales are. Do they have Grand Crus in South Africa? Well, they're kind of, I think that... that, that kind they, of, they have the equivalent... Yeah, there's an established hierarchy now, I think, as the country is starting to develop what it does best. And certain regions are a bit like, you were talking about this earlier off camera, it's like, if you go to New Zealand, everyone knows you're in Central Otago, you're supposed to try the Pinot Noir, because it's accepted that the, that the Pinot Noirs kick ass somehow. Um, and Robertson was the first region to really cut its teeth on Chardonnay in a big way. It certainly is facing the UK. I remember when I was working in Odd Bins years and years ago, there was a wine that we sold by this dude. This guy's called Darnie Devet. 
Mm -hmm. The family have been making wine down there for hundreds and hundreds of years. He's been there for a long time as a family. It's one of the original sort of settler families, the De Vets family. Um, and De Vets Hof means the house of the De Vets. And he made this wine, which was just like Chardonnay, but no oak, with, with just a little bit of leaves on it. It was called Chardonnay sur -Lis. And I sold that in Obbins mm. for three forty nine, And it was <laughs> unbelievable amount of wine. You could drink so much of it. I got tonka bean and cinnamon. Yeah, the you'll, you'll, get, you'll get beans. You'll get How beans. How is there no, like spice on that? So what's happened here is Bon Valon is a is a, a wine which they make every year, which he makes with no oak. There's no oak on this wine, and as you know, with New Ze with New World wines, when you think about buying wine from Australia, South Africa, Chile, when you buy a Chardonnay, you expect it to taste of vanilla. You expect it. It comes with the territory. Yeah. But this is what Chardonnay tastes like without it. But what they do instead is they stir the hell out of the wine when it's fermenting it. And we call that batonnage. And they stir it while it's fermenting, which stirs up all the, all all the, the muck at the bottom, all the leaves. And you end up with this much waxier, but also quite toasty notes. So this is another like way of getting the, almost the pomace flavour back into this, the wine. This is how you get a wine that, because the oak gives the richness to a wine. This mm. is another way of getting rich into the wine. So it's not skinny and thin and doesn't just taste of Chardonnay, but has a rich, creamy palate as well. This is how Chablis is made. This Chablis has, is usually not very oaky. It's, it's really, I, I, I can't understand why, but I'm getting like tonka bean and like allspice kind of. I'm 100% with you with the bean. The there is almost a slightly oily junipery quality, I think. Mm. And um, God, can we taste it now? Yeah, go, 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 go for it, go for it, go for it. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I couldn't express enough how difficult it is to actually just nose this stuff and your mouth starts watering because it smells so good. It's a messy drool, isn't it? And, you're, and you've got to do the serious, like, this is the wine chat bit. But, like, in my, my sound, drinking sound, style, it sound really it's weird, like, right? boom, and then, like, oh, now we'll think about it, you know? Because it's all retro-nasal in my mind. Yeah. You've like, just got to, it's, it's kind of a feeling more than a taste itself. And, and the thing is that you, you're, you're spitting out words to describe this wine, both how you're tasting it. It tastes completely different the way it smells. And there's so many yeah. words to describe this wine. And now... If it takes more words to describe it, we have a word for that in wine. And it's the same with whiskey or anything else. It's, comple uh. it's complexity. <laughs> if it takes two words complexity. to describe something, if it's like Chile Merlot, alcoholic Ribena, right? <laughs> Full stop. Then that's not a complex wine. But if, it's, <laughs> but if it's like a Merlot from Bordeaux that costs a couple hundred pounds, you can bet your bottom dollar that when you smell it and taste it, it takes a few pages to describe the thing. And here we've got a wine which is unbelievably inexpensive. You can buy this online for under £12, this wine. And it's a double gold winner out of thousands of wines at a competition in South Africa. And the reason why it's inexpensive is because there isn't any oak. Oak is easily the most expensive part of the production process. So by removing oak, you're removing the vast majority of the cost of the winemaker. So here we are. Bon Valant 2020, smelling of tonka bean, allspice. <laughs> Um, it doesn't taste no. of those. But one thing I will say that there's a type of uh, like acid that I got that I can't identify immediately. It's not like, it's not citric acid. It's not like, it's, it's almost closer to a carbonic acid. It's, 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 it's malic acid. It's, yeah, it's apple acid. Okay. So you've got, you got the, most, the most prevalent acid in wine is tartaric acid. Mm -hmm. And then it's followed by malic or lactic, depending on how the wine has been produced. And lactic acid can be, malic acid can be turned into lactic acid using a bacterial... Mm -hmm. Process right, so um, the other acids lacto are fermentation exactly. So wow, malactic. Mal 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 <laughs> so so um, there are other processes and there are other acids which count. Ascorbic acid, you know that vitamin yep. C tastes sweet. There's a sweetness to it. Citric acid, you can't mistake it. It just tastes of lemon. You got tartaric is, acid is tart. It's this like tart. it's bubbly, but it's not. You know, yeah, it's spritzy almost. It always tastes like it's a bubble's going to appear, but it doesn't. It's it's sherbety. Sherbety. There you go. Go get me some orange sherbet. A sherbet, right. a sherbet dip dab. So, sherbet Yeah. He's not going to say that. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> we don't know that. There's a TV show. I'm pretty they, sure like, he's capable of using oh, that word. Okay. I, like, we should really write down the words and see if, and, and play um, Ollie Smith bingo. That would have been even better. Yeah. That would have been even funnier. Right. So, we got sherbet mm -hmm. Um what else have you got? We've got what, what's your four words? Zingy. I mean, zingy. Really zingy. zingy. Beautiful acidity. <laughs> Complex. Complex. Um, We're not going to go with tonka bean. He no said oak. There's no oak in this wine, but I, I know that. He doesn't know there's no oak in it. So I reckon he says it tastes like there's some oak in this wine. Have you watched it? Because that tastes... No, but the, the, the whole lees process is designed to, to give the impression it's there. Um, this wine tastes to me like it's been lightly oaked. But it, there's no, okay. I know there's no oak, only because I know which wine. I, know <laughs> wine. I looked it up and they said this wine is never oaked. I went, really? 
So has he tasted like it before? I don't think he would have tasted this wine either. No. All right, let's see what he says. Let's go to Ollie. Okay, let's have a look. That was a bit out there. I'm going to probably... Thanks, Joe. Wine number three, Chardonnay. Wow. I mean, we could talk about Chardonnay getting its passport stamped all the way around the world, having unimpeachable credentials in Burgundy, Champagne and beyond. This, though, two gongs. Should have a gold bottle. It's so good. This is unbelievable. The judgment of the oak, I mean, it's perfect. You get this wonderful savoury framing. There's plenty of white peach. And what I think is brilliant is you could have this informally with some shellfish at the beach, or it would be as at home in the most gorgeous, sumptuous setting over a Sunday roast. And it's got that magic word that in the wine trade people love to say, complexity. It has layers. It's a wine you can consider. It's a wine you can cogitate over. It's absolutely delightful. It's a wine to enthrall. And there's only one person who could enthrall more than this wine, Joe. The other thing I'd say before I hand back to you though, that lovely thrilling zing, that's gonna do plenty of time in bottle. So if you prefer savory flavors in your wine, you could tuck that away, let it have a snooze for a few years and then unfurl the hidden dimensions. Ooh, I'd like to see the hidden dimensions of Joe Wadzak. Back to you. Thanks very much, Mr. <laughs> Smith. What is he talking? That, oh, but um, do you know what? When he said complexity, we went, whoa! Drop it like yeah. it's hot. Thank you very um, much, Ollie. So, so, so told he said told you he's good. as well. You haven't seen these? No, I, but he's good. Because okay. he agrees with me. Because the email he sent to me <laughs> like, was just me pattern. and the email chain. So, I think... It, I haven't it, seen... Look, I didn't You just know what he's like. I kind of know what he's He didn't like. say okie though. He did say there did was he? just enough oak at the beginning, which I, which I, oh. would, I would have said the same thing. So I was oh. kind of guessing he would have said it. I'm, it's quite hard to believe this wine has no wood, but uh, as it turns out, it doesn't. But it's, um, oh, yes. but it's, it's delicious wine. It's so good. That, you can buy that. I swear to God, you can go online today. I went online just to have a look to find out information about it. 11 25 for a wine that good in a bottle. I mean, if you recycle the glass, you'll probably get a fiver back. Anyway. Right. Cool. So, so that where was the are 2020. we? So I think I, let's do a like gratuitous like a shot gratuitous of all the. Yeah. Can we do that? Is that all sure, right? Babe. Do you yeah. mind? Yeah, man. Uh, so boom. Right. So 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 far we have tasted. Let's start at the beginning. We started okay. with nineteen. Right. We started with and how is this pronounced? It's pronounced Demersdal. Demersdal. Right, so we tried, started with the 2019 Demer style. It's a handsome label, hey? Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's very it, 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 And it feels very, re like, it feels like they're, they're paying homage to their region and history at the same time. It's a beautiful thing. On the thing. label. Beautiful thing. And, and then we went to the 2020, wasn't it? Yeah. Right, and then and next. And then, we went to, that's the last one we just tried, and this is the one we haven't tried yet. All right. There we go. And the now, last th one coming up. This is going to be a whole heap more difficult to try and guess. A heap, like heaps more difficult, mate. Heaps more difficult, heaps yeah. more. Heaps. It's going to be heaps more heaps difficult. Heaps more difficult, mate. <laughs> we, should, we should try to find someone from Australia who'd be keen on doing this oh, same yeah. type of thing. Yeah. And uh, get an Australian wine thing going on. Wait, how do we get the... See, look. So if Emma is hearing this, grab a screenshot. That's a shot. <laughs> that, right. That's the money shot right there. So, I love I love user stills. Back lens. to where we it were. It's so cool with that all in focus. So yeah, cool. right? Right? Yeah. This is the one spot where it's in focus. If you do there, it's dead. So this, this is, is the last studio, one. Ben. We've got it we've got it all poured. Yeah. Right? So we've got it poured. And it's been open. By the way, for those people watching, do you did, somebody asked me the other day, do you decant what you asked me last week, actually. Yeah, I, I yeah. Yes, you decant white wine. If it's this young, if you put that into a decanter, in fact, you can buy some decanters that are narrow enough to actually fit into an ice bucket. Um, wines that young that are supposed to be drunk when they're five or six years old, yes, put them into a decanter. Give it as much air as it can. Or failing that, pour some in the glass and do what Dean and I have just done, which is just leave it for 10 minutes. So it's had a chance to, I don't know, gulp some air back in its lungs. It's been sitting under a screw cap for the last two years. <gasps> So it just needs chance, like that. What was it? What was it that Helena said last week about the um, buying the, the temper mattress? That was a brilliant oh, thing, right? Gold. That was gold. gold. That was gold. That was a really good idea. That that's a great way of explaining breathing. Brilliant, brilliant. Because whiskey does the same thing. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I I once did an experiment where I poured uh, a fifteen mil measure of uh, whiskey, 
Let's not concentrate on that right now, which whiskey it was, but poured 15 mils. Waited a couple of minutes, so I waited like, I think it was two or three minutes, poured another one, waited, poured another one, waited, poured another one, waited, poured another one, waited, and then tasted them against each other all at the same time. And the one that had been waiting for a long time tasted way like softer and smoother. So it had and a chance to side, settle down a little. And, uh, and <laughs> once it had breathed a little bit, it was much better. And we used to do this thing, uh, I worked for a vodka company, and we'd give people a taste of vodka against each other. And we would pour Vigero, our Vigero vodka. <laughs> we would pour our vodka first and let it sit and breathe for like twenty minutes. You told me that's yeah. such a cool thing. And move, then we'd right? we'd take the other people's vodka and we'd be like, this is such and such and blah 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 and we'd pour it. And and uh, the and, and they're comparing. And, uh, and the arrested spirit. The arrested spirit tasted considerably smoother. It wasn't we weren't lying to them, but I mean I, I Letting just, it I, breathe I, I would definitely use, I would made use, a difference. I would definitely use that trick. And it, it's certainly true with wine. It, in any wine. Any young wine benefits from some air. And I think oh. young, expensive Chardonnay. Or in this case, not that expensive. Incredibly cheap. We need to figure that out. So I've got my phone charging. And ad hoc, if anyone's interested, please comment. I'm going to try to unplug one of the cameras and plug this into my uh, HDMI switcher and then use the app to try to find these um, these wines. wines. See what it says. As you would if you were in South Africa. Absolutely. So, the thing about this oh one Oh God, is, I just want to drink it straight away. Right. No, do, you know what, no, do you know what? What are we tasting? Have a mouthful first. And what are we I'll, tasting? Then I'll try and explain what's happened. This is a wine that a year older. Um, Robertson's quite removed, so the vintage might have been slightly different up there. It's, it's cool up there. I'm getting like, if you, if you took a really nice ripe slice of white peach and then like threw it at an open lime wheel and they hit each other midair and then mm. the peach landed on your tongue. <laughs> right? So it's peach and lime. When you taste it. Aer aerated. The uh, evolution of the wine and, the, and the, the, the phenolic change. I'm now getting a taste almost like a, like a banana daiquiri. There's almost a banana-y foam, more of a cereal custard apple note to the drink on the palate. It's not nearly as aggressive. It's much more like, you know those yellow banana sweets? Like yeah, chewy, yeah. foamy sweets? There's a kind of a soft edge. I get a little hint of, yeah, I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? You, but, you planted it into my head, I think, though. Oh, yeah. But, it's, it, but I'm, I'm feeling less of the, uh, the, the angry citrus in mm. the first wine. I don't get the zing. Yeah, the no. Zing's, the zing's calmed down. And Chardonnay, Chardonnay's this shape, right? So, Sauvignon Blanc's like a samurai sword. It's sharp, it's linear. Chardonnay should be cuddly and round, and this wine has now found itself a bit. And I think that it's it's evident, having tasted this wine, that that wine will be much nicer if you left it alone mm. for another six months. Um, it I, needs another like a couple of years, and you'd just be like spot on. Wow. And this wine has more of a it's, cereal note. It's more of a really good though. It's delicious, isn't it? It's amazing that wine. I mean, you think that, that's so much wine for so little money. That's cheaper. If you went to I don't know, let's say you went to Went to Soho and I bought, that's two pints of Guinness. Do you know, right? do you know and all the amount of time and effort that went into it? Do you know what I'm getting? Yuzu. Oh. I'm getting like a developed Yuzu. Like, they're more. Do you know? You're going to have to prove that to me, Dean. You know, have okay, you got, so, you so let me. Prepared? I've got uh, not got yuzu fresh powder. Yuzu here, I've got Yuzu powder for the Fuzu. But um, I'm more thinking, you know, when you go to like uh, a nice uh, sushi restaurant and they're, it's so clean. That you can taste the flavor of the salmon, yeah. and then you can the 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 rice has a hot, tiny hint of both acidity and sweetness, but somewhere in between they've almost like painted like yuzu or some an, yeah, yeah, an yeah. odd citrus note there's almost under, like a, there's almost underneath like a, it, like and you, almost like a ponzu. Exactly, thing from it. that's that. And it's got you know what? It's got the savory too. You know now you've said yeah. there's real umami like this, in there. This this makes me want. This is what I want to. I want to drink this while I eat like. Sushi. Horse mackerel. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Or eel. Oh, dude, dude. Eel. Eel. So, aged on, it, wrapped in, in soy overnight. Mm. Horse. Oh. oh, God. That's oh, oh. so nice. U uni. Uni with this as well. I'm the just... Little, the little rose. Okay, we have to see what he said. So, <laughs> what did we say? Is there well, a, we're, 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 this has actually taken me... Oh, my God. This is such a I can't call, I, I've forgotten. Um, I've completely forgotten that I'm doing a live stream for a moment. Mm. I would have just... I don't know what to say now. But that's cool. <laughs> if the wines don't do, what, where the wines we go? do that to you, it's doing something right. Wow. Now. Where do we go? Well, we said... Um, uh, I really creamy. like that. And it's not what the style I would normally like. What did I say? Creamy. Um, 
Yuzu, he's not yeah, going to say Yuzu. Yuzu, Yuzu no, but, but, but <laughs> would taste great with sushi. But but so but if, he says, with if he says citrusiness and he says like seafood y, yeah. right? He's not going to say ponzu, but that no, but bang sure. on. I'm playing langoustines with that. Would just langoustines. Rock and roll. <laughs> Barbecue <laughs> lobster. Langoustines are so, no. so specific. Right, so. <laughs> seafood y, pair, this, t t it feels like you're supposed to eat. It's really funny, good quality it's funny food because it. you, you you identify that it goes with the sushi rice, which was a very key point. The ponzu, the subtle umami, mm. that 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 kind of citric zip through the soy. It's it's all over and, the lips. But There's it a savory, also, almost a saline the, minerality to it. The one. stodginess of the rice as well would need cutting through, sure. and that would do it really well. That's so Let's much see what wine he says. So little money. Right, it's amazing. I'm it's liking amazing. this wine amazing stuff. Wine. It's it, this is it, it's a bit dangerous though. I'm not going to lie. I just want to now. I now want <laughs> to consume that entire well, bottle. Well, you're um, going. You're going <laughs> I'm right? looking at it longingly. Let's see what this is the last one, right? Yeah, this is the last one. Let's see what Ollie okay. said, and and I'm going to try to hook this thing up in the meantime. So yes, absolutely. Might be a bit distracted, and we'll see whether we can get this app working. Yes, indeed, Joe Wodzak, and to our final <laughs> wine of the it. night. Look at this. What a beauty to go out on. We can talk about the talent in South Africa. We can discuss the modernity, the aspects of soil the different places where it's made. What we can also talk about is the history. So the family behind this arrived, uh, I think in 1694 to the Cape or thereabouts. This is a place, South Africa, that has heritage, centuries of tried and tested corners where people have planted vines, worked out what works where best, and then built on that. And this is a wine that shows expertise, effortless grace and beautiful judgment. It's got a wonderful peachy character to it. The oak could not be better judged. Everything about this wine is resonant. It is singing and it really does vie with some of the greatest iterations of Chardonnay in the world. There are lots of places doing it well. Uh, this, however, feels to me like a bottle of wine that I would happily buy, share and take to any any place in the world, really, to just show off how great it is. Because I know it will raise a smile, and that, ultimately, is what wine is supposed to do. Deliver complexity, you can consider, you can cogitate, or you can just enjoy it. This wine delivers the goods on all fronts. Rather like you, Joe Wobzak! <laughs> thank right. you, thank you, Ollie, for doing this for us this week. He's been um, amazing. You're just such a sparkling talent, and uh, you make it nice and simple. We both kind of we both cut the, the same block of cheese from different angles and it's uh it's nice to have us both on the show for a change we don't do much tv together um and i'm glad you like the wine as much as we did and dean clearly loves the wine i love it's it so <laughs> delicious, right? it's so good do, would you would you believe that you could get a wine as good as that for under 15 pounds in this country i mean that's how, um, it's crazy so inexpensive joe yeah i might try i'm going to um, try something highly technical so Okay. I think I think if you could do a summary for people on what they would expect for these wines, I might try to get this thing up and running. <laughs> okay. What I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a bit of a, um, a kind of a pricey on Sauvignon Blanc in South Africa because there's only one example. Let's be honest, and you can buy far far less expensive ones. Um, there are Sauvignon Blancs made quite a long way north, which are actually very very acceptable in some very good cooperatives. Um, which would cost about six ninety nine if you bought them in the UK, uh, seven ninety nine. Those kind of wines. Beamsdale makes a wine in Aldi. Go and buy it. I think it's only seven ninety nine, and it's crazy delicious. And it's a Sauvignon Blanc mixed with a Semillon, and Semillon is the other white grape variety from Bordeaux. So it's kind of like Beamsdale's take on a on a on a white Bordeaux, but from Cape Town. It's it's you're getting you're getting real wine for cheap branded money um so Sauvignon Blanc has its place in South Africa um cool climate areas in South Africa tended not to be that cool I mean you can still almost fry an egg on the pavement but if you go really south um down to uh the real tip of the south of the African continent or if you go out into some of the marine areas uh there's other wines a very famous wine from a long way south made by a guy called David Nivut called Ghost Corner which is another um wine that's getting an almost uh, global reputation for being one of the great Sauvignon Blancs uh, in the New World. And um, Sauvignon Blanc is, is something which I don't suppose people 
associate with South Africa as a specialty. But if you're near Cape Town, you're in Constantia, like 20 minutes drive, no direction, you can go and see some pretty sexy vineyards, pretty nice places with nice restaurants where you can go in and sit down and drink a bottle of wine, almost this quality, for about seven quid. Um, so, so, Joe. Yes, mate. Uh, I think, and, and everyone at home, if yeah. you're watching right now, just st stick with me, okay? I'm going to try to do something. Are you going to press the red button? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm going to try to do a highly technical thing I've never done before, and I think it would. I think it will work. Okay, right. Um, <laughs> uh, so, so, right. Um, and I just oh, made this up. <laughs> it looks Dude, like it's working. working, man. That's so right, good. Right. So, so, look at this, right? Boom. This is how the app works. Mr. How, on the fly, yeah! Oh, I there, love technology. While you're there, could you, could you hack so, my bank? So, <laughs> how cool is that though, right? It's a glitch. So, so if I was looking for this, yes. I, what would I put in? Well, I'm looking at the, what does it say on the screen there? Does it say, um, uh, does it search by, by grape variety or by country or by name? Just put in, put in. So actually, let's, in. let's go home, yeah. right? So 2020 awards, like, like, let's go 2020 awards and then, f oh, there's an advert. Oh, so I should have left that up, actually. Let's be fair. <laughs> <laughs> that was my instinct. You see those thumbs? Those are PlayStation thumbs. <laughs> right, so, a, like, order by. Yeah. Award. Right, yeah. okay. Double Awards. Gold. So we want double gold. All right, okay. And then category. And we're going to go, are we looking for this white, one? Yeah, go, so Chardonnay. I like Chardonnay. So yeah. I'm going to say Chardonnay. Oh, there's white wines. Okay. Subcategory. Now, do you know that's going to be enough? They're only about 20 or 30. Right. Miles. Chardonnay, bam, search, yeah, right, ooh. What's come up? So, can you see on there? Can, it, can anyone see on this? The screen. Should it I make it bigger? Is it very tiny? Let's try to make it bigger. Let's make the size bigger. And we'll move it. So the uh, fact is you can, you can download this app. It's called um, Vino Veritas by CPT. No, yeah? Yep. Um, which I see, oh, CTP, which I presume means some like Cape Town programmers or something. So um, Vino Veritas by CTP, uh, and you can get it on uh, the App Store um, through. Um, so it's 149 rand. So 149 rand. And look, orders are done per case. So 149 rand. Do you know how much that is? I have no idea. That's about eight quid. No way. Yeah. Really? This wine, a wine of this caliber, then you can add to cut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Oh, look, there's I've got the, halves on a pallet. Where's the? That's eight oh, pounds. Oh, is it the 20? Pallet. Wait, so the 2019's gone. The 19 might have sold out. Yeah, 19 yeah. sold out, ladies and gentlemen. Ugh. But that's how the the app works. And like, man, that's pretty badass. That's maybe the last bottle. Oh, so of the total in the world. 800. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Anyway, that's so. That's how the app works. Um, <laughs> I'm glad that I'm able to just plug my phone in <laughs> That's and then really cool. create a box like that. That's which really is awesome. Pretty cool. We'll do that next um, week with the other wine because we've got some really cool wines next week. Yeah. Um, let's go back to normal. Well, I, I, all I can say is Ollie did an absolute blinding job. Yeah, he was amazing. <coughs> how are we doing for time? Right. I think we're we're pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It's delicious. This um, so, which was your favourite? If you had to pick one out of the four. I'm kind of guessing. I kind of think that last one. <laughs> yeah. That last one really, like, I, I, you know what? I love the, I love the other ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's really difficult to tell because it's funny. It's not, they're not, I go for just fatty, sweet, buttery. But also you go for complexity. Um, it's the, this is like, so many more, it shows so many I more I go layers. for the insane, like, you know, uh, whiskey drinker Chardonnay, if what that I'd makes like sense. What I'd like to do now is I'm going to taste those Demon Stars again. And see whether my opinion's changed because the 2020s. We're well, we going to put them all up. Yeah, why not? Uh, I don't know which order they came in, so I'm just going to give these glasses give a, a quick rinse. But just just compare these two again because I think I think because we tried the oldest one first. That that would make sense if we were trying to make sure that they both were shown in their best light because. Often when you taste wines in competitions, when I'm mm -hmm. judging a wine competition, it, it's, young, it's young first, old second, because the old is much more complex. But the lack of freshness sometimes makes them look a bit flat and a bit heavy going and a bit kind of tired. 
So there's been a bit of a swap round. In international competition, you taste the older wines first. And I'm not entirely sure I agree with that. So, so you take, pour that in one glass. So that's, a, that's, that's the one the we 20. just had. I don't know. This, these are the Semyons. So these are the first two wines. Right. So the one we just had. The one we me, just had is that first. I'm going to top them all up. Okay, evenly. do that, do that, do that. Okay. <laughs> right. And if anyone has any questions or comments for Joe, yeah. let us know. Um, uh, no, so, uh, the only, only question I want to ask is, uh, what, how much have you eaten during lockdown to look like that? Uh, it's <laughs> funny because everything seems to have frozen up. Ooh. So is it's it? hard to, yeah, there's like, there's been no, no action for quite a while. No chit chat. So we'll see, we'll see. Okay, I'll, just, that one. I'll just, just, just check the feed's going. Right, and then, there we go. 2019 of that. I'll just, just, just check the feed's going. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're good, we're good, we're good. The delay's not too bad either. No, that's really quick. That's, that's pretty. Ah, oh, you see, see this is what I wanted to show. Okay, and then, this is really, really cool. Dino, you're going to love this. Um, talk about, talk about, because, um, okay, I'll tell you a very quick story about, about wine, and I think it helps people explain, look, one of the problems about me being an expert, if I, do, if I have a room full of people who want to uh -oh. know about wine, and I then ask them which wine they like, yeah? Yeah. They're not telling me which wine they like, they're almost always telling me which wine they think they should like. Um, it tells, wanna, you, it tells you more. They want to get it right. Yeah. As opposed it to it tells you more about themselves than about the wine in some cases. But maybe they don't know. Yeah, I know. So they, they second guess and they hedge their bets. They don't. There isn't this. It's a shame because people should be allowed to have this true outpouring of that's amazing, you know. And if you start giggling or you, uh, there's a tear in your eye, if if a liquid is, is giving you that much emotion without words, then it's a special thing. That's right? it. So so and for me, I 1996 Dom Perignon. You see, that's just not that's not mucking about. That's one of the world's like, greatest ever. That's champions. like that, yeah, that's not mucking. That's about. my shit. That's yeah, my jam. Yeah, 1996 Dom Ruinar, I had that uh, with the, the late great Gerard Basset, who's one of the most famous many in the world. Um, who passed away recently. Um, it was uh, Len Evans gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> who was a great friend of Gerard Basset. Uh, what yeah. a small world. Uh, okay. It um, is a small world, but. I'm not a wine person, really. I was just happened to be at a wine event as the bartender polishing the glasses. As I was explaining to Joe, one of, one of the best days I had polishing glasses, there was a, a six-course meal. I was the only person polishing the glasses. Everyone else was too precious. <laughs> and there was 160 people sat at it, and all the glasses, all the wine glasses needed pre-polishing. So there was six by 160. <laughs> Honestly, like at the end of it, my forearms were actually bigger. Like these bits yeah, were just yeah. bulging out. I was just like, boom, I had a whole system with polishing glasses. I, I love polishing glasses, actually. It's, no, 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 but you, makes like me you said, feel nice. Like you said, just as if, it's, as if it was given to you as a treat. You were sitting there looking yeah. out the window and then you saw these, these whales appearing. Yeah, whales appeared. Whales. Well, well, it was well, right, so, uh, um, Great Barrier Feast in Hamilton Island, amazing. Talking to camera two, so I'm looking straight at my insert now. The, right. The, um, the thing about tasting wine, if somebody asks you whether you like a wine or not, tell them the honest truth. <clears throat> it doesn't matter what they think. Taste is entirely subjective. In fact, your sense of smell is, is built from the day you were born. There's nothing in there when you're born, and every single thing you do, every reaction you have to what you smell, creates another synapse in the brain. It's built out of a very complex... Um, part of your cerebral cortex. So if you're, if you're a, an Inuit who lives in Canada, you're born thinking it's okay to eat raw, rotten deer meat because that's all they eat, it's caribou. And they go, mm, mum, can I have some more caribou? A bit mm. of rotten biltong to school. Or, you know, when you're, you're 25 years old, you're trying to press a lady, you go into a restaurant, order the cheese menu, and they go, oh, rock for my favourite. You know, if you give a kid a choice between a block of cheese or a block of chocolate when he's three for being a good boy. I'll tell you which one he's going to pick, right? Is it Axel? <laughs> is Axel going to pick rock for? Uh, Axel goes for the cheese, man. Oh, Axel's crazy. See, he's so, got his mum's cheese jeans. So I think it's all about I'm the chocolate guy. I'm the chocolate guy. It's so important that people just realise that actually what the pleasure you get out of wine is, is built entirely out of entirely yours. personal experiences. Yep. So it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. It doesn't matter what I think. And my problem is that I've spent a lifetime um, being trained to try and second guess other people. And as my wife uh, reminds me on a daily basis, it's a load of bollocks. Um, and I think it's wonderful that I've come round full circle from b wondering about every tiny little nuance. I, I was a super taster. I'd look for every tiny little nuance. I'd freak the hell out of people going, well, I can tell this wood comes from, from Charente. It's definitely not Vosho, because I can tell this wine was made by this guy. <laughs> it's it like cracking like Poirot. But it, it didn't cure cancer. Why have I wasted that much energy yeah. on such a simple thing? 
the pleasure is... It seems is, like you have to remember a lot but of the, things. There is a lot of things to remember. There's a lot of things to remember in your business. And Electra is a lawyer. Remember how much she has to learn oh, about things. Okay. No idea. So, so here we are in a situation where what really matters is me and you and these glasses. Do we like Going backwards and forwards, being a bit well, nerdy, we know we love them. having a bit of fun. But what I want you to do is try the first Sauvignon Blanc again, bro. The, the 2020, which was like the mega fruity, like kind of Mbongo, the drink in the Congo. And stuff. <laughs> okay. Wow, it stands out compared to the other three. It's crazy, crazy fruity, right? Now, it's the taste fruitiest. This. Now, try the next one. Now, just drink that, smell it just for a bit, and then put the one in your mouth and hold it in your mouth for a few seconds. Now, texturally, that wine has way more to say than the first wine. The first one's actually a bit of a cheap, cheap trick. Honestly, this, this wine is like so fruity, it's Soho it's, during Pride. Yeah, it is. It's, <laughs> it's rainbow, baby. It's a party. But it's incredible. But actually, it's when incredible. When you look at these wines, just because a wine t smells of passion fruit, you think it's exotic. But in some countries, passion fruit ain't that exotic. If it smells of apples, it'll make it more expensive. Wow. So I, I'm starting to lean towards the other one. I'm starting to think the 19 was the, is the best. Great. The bigger so man. you like that one? Well, that was the one you like. Is it? Originally, that's the one you loved the first time because we tasted it the other way around to start with. Okay. But because you, I, like, I know you go for the layers, I think you'll go for the second wine now. Uh, it's got more to say, isn't it? It's more, there's more, it's more of a pillow. Of, it's like a duvet in the mouth. It's got layers and layers of fruit. It's like diving into a giant marshmallow. I would it's love stuck. to be able to go to South Africa with you one day, mate, and just take you to some wine farms. I had a great time last time I was in South Africa. Oh. It was so That's funny because one of the guys was like, oh, it's great you're doing stuff, stuff with South Africa. Do you remember that time you came to South Africa and we went to Tabletop Mountain and everything? Like, how do I forget that? <laughs> like, it's are you there. serious? Was I there? <laughs> I'm going to check my photo. <laughs> Who do you think I am? <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's different if they say, do you remember that time you came to Coventry? Right? <laughs> no, but it's... No, <laughs> sorry, but, so, sorry people so from Coventry. Myself and Nick, so Nick, Nick and I went up, up to the top of the mountain. And we're standing there, and I've got my camera, and I've got my uh, GoPro, and I, I go over the fence, right? And I'm standing on the very, very, Precipice. very, very edge of Tabletop Mountain, looking down, looking at the, ca the, the, the ocean yeah, yeah, in front yeah, of me, yeah. just being like, this is amazing. And it's beautiful blue skies. Uh, and then a cloud come over, and boom, I couldn't see this far in front of my face. <laughs> I had bang, to find bang, my way back. <laughs> and I was like, this is why you don't go over the and fence. And they've got these nasty, well, vicious yeah. little animals called dussies, which are Do like, they? They, look like um, they look like marmots, like little groundhogs. But they're actually 96% elephant, believe it or not. What? And, and these little animals, and they live in the looks and craddies on, on Table Mountain. And what, now you're not allowed to smoke up on Table Mountain outside, just, to, just for social reasons. But they used to be able to smoke outside. So they come up on the lift, they burst out and just go, oh, oh, you know, been in the lift for five minutes, have to have a cigarette. Yeah. And the dussies used to eat the cigarette butts. Oh, that's no. So what happened for about two years after that was the dussies became psychotic because they had nicotine withdrawal. <laughs> so because when they said you can't smoke up anymore, these dusties started jumping over fences, biting me people on the ass. And, wow. the, and the dusty is like it looks like the cuddliest thing in the world. Uh, my wife and I have some in the, in this in a lab. We, we go quite long on cuddly toys. We collect a few. But this this dusty it looks like a, it just looks like a cute little hamster. Oh, they're not cute. They're not cute. And the, they're they, like koalas, like yeah, 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 they're, yeah, so, yeah. They're addicted to you, you clip just right. So when they get <laughs> they fix, they get pretty nasty. Too. So so this is the thing. So uh, yeah. Um, Dusties are now fa more famous for getting nicotine withdrawal than being the cute little animal on top of the table mountain. Well, as long as they get protected, that's, oh, yeah. that's no, all that matters. No beautiful things. Right, so. so okay, so, so the second one doesn't have the, the precocious brute fruit of the first one. The first one, that fruit is what we call primary fruit, and it disappears after six months. It's natural. If you get a bag of passion fruits and you, and you, and you, you just beat it with a then, stick, yeah, then you'd smell that. Now, in, in France, when they make wine, they don't like that in a wine because How? they say, well, I can buy a bag of passion fruits. Why am I buying a bottle of wine that costs 20 quid when I could just buy a bag of passion fruits for a fiver? Why, why am I buying a wine that smells of passion fruits? That's fruit? not just it. passion fruit, though. That's, no, yeah. that's a... But it's the nuance. The thing about it is that New World wines, the concept of New World wine is it smells like really strong extracts of fruit. But the Old World, they want wine to smell and taste like wine. That's and the so... second one's like wine. It's a vinous right. wine. We've got to wrap this up. Yeah. It's eight o'clock. Thank you very much again to Veritas and all these delicious yeah, wines. Amazing. Next week, we've got Helen McGinn from Saturday Kitchen, uh, one of the nicest people in the entire wine industry. Used to be head buyer at Tesco's. She knows a thing or two. And I'm giving her four different Stellenbosch Cabernets, which is one of the world's greatest places to grow 
maybe the world's greatest red grape, Cabernet Sauvignon. I hope you enjoy that. A word from our sponsors? Yeah, a word from our sponsors, but... God, I could go oh, again. It's impossible we go to round say, again? It's impossible oh, to say which one you like the best. They're so good, aren't they? Oh, right. We're going to have to leave it at that. I, I was planning to say this one's my favourite, but it's impossible. Um, Which thank is you, the right ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. If anyone is still watching, it's been a, an absolute pleasure, certainly for me. Um, and uh, yeah, let's hear from our sponsors and then uh, close out the show. Boom. In Vincent, South Africa, is proud to be involved in Veritas as the sponsor of the Vertex Award given to the top wine of this prestige competition. On behalf of everybody at Inventions, I want to wish each one who is involved a blessed 2021 and I hope you will have a fantastic tasting in London. Thank you.